Hey guys, so today, since it's my birthday, I'm going to go over my favorite LEGO catalog, which is the Holiday 2010 catalog. This one's my favorite mainly because of the story, which I'm going to go into in one certain page, but obviously the cover, I love this cover. I've actually never had it in the version I had, because it had the cover ripped off, I guess, when I found it. But I just like the look of it. It's more interesting, I guess. And it says over 160 gifts inside. And, of course, actually the guy who uh, I got originally got it from over a year ago, he has uh, it's a little bit of written here, but I don't mind. I think it's kind of cute. We have the Winter Toy Shop, which I think I went over in the, one of the last few catalogs. The Go Universe, and then the main one of this catalog, which is the Winter Village Bakery, which I like quite a bit. I think it looks interesting, and I like how they did the guy following an ice there. You know, the Harry Potter, City, Atlantis, Games, Hero Factory, Universe, and Star Wars. Alright, so this first page here mainly has the Medieval Market Village, Imperial Flagship, and which I've talked about those before, but the Tower Bridge as well. This might be a set I might review one day, because I do have it, but that will probably be in Season 3, maybe the season premiere. But I do have this set, and I'll have it over at my house soon. And it's a really interesting set, and I kind of want to go over it, mainly more of the details. It'll probably be a shorter review since I really don't care about going over the details as much, but I'll probably go over some parts of the build I really do like. So stay tuned for that. That'll probably be like end of the year though. And then we have some sets that have already kind of came out. Grand Emporium, I think that came out in the summer but of 2010. Shuttle Adventures, which I do have. Maybe I'll review that season free as well. And then we have the Taj Mahal. Here's the architecture, this is some interesting sets, Empire State Building, Sea Needle, Space Needle, White House, Falling Water, and this, the Solomon Museum, I don't know how to pronounce those, but. Then we have Harry Potter, which, um, I have a lot of the newer sets, but I do like these a kind of a bit. Quidditch Match, interesting set for like 20 bucks, which I'm surprised. Ring Dobby, which is a weird set to me because it was like a small, little, sm really small set that has, uh, just mainly centered around one character. We have the Burrow, which again, I think they should remake that soon. This set here, the Hogwarts Express, which they have remade, and the Hagrid's Hut. All right, so here is the main Hogwarts castle that came out this year. Now, of course, I have the other two, uh, the two sets that make up the newer castle, which there is rumored there's gonna be a third one, but I do kind of like this one a bit. I just wish, I mean, the figures are great, but I do think if they had a little more, um, I guess more expansion to it, I think that'd be cool. They had a little more, a couple more expansion type sets. They only had one other one, and that one was kind of small. But I do like what they did with this one. I definitely feels a little more complete than the newer stuff, but they are having more expansions for that one. And then down here they have some adverts for the Harry Potter game. Uh, they had more and then some accessories here with the magnet set and the keychains, which they usually do for these. Then we have one of my favorite parts of 2010, the LEGO City sets, which are really nostalgic to me. I have quite a bit of these, including the passenger plane. I don't have a city house, but I kind of do like the look of it. Uh, this set I never really cared for. Uh, I mean, I've never really picked out the sets when they were around, but this one doesn't interest me too much. And then this set, which I of course have, I don't know if I'll review this one day, but it does look interesting. I might review more LEGO City sets if you're interested, but I don't know. I do like how significant this one is to me, and also only $100 when it came out, and it includes a huge plane, and this plane is like really big too. A pretty decently sized airport compared to any other ones released. A uh, little tower there, I don't know what time to remember, the kind of, uh, just a little signal tower, and then some good figures, and then helicopter and limousine I never really care too much about. Trains, I actually think I had mostly all of these sets except this one. And I had this one at someone else's place, but broke. The train station, which I think I may have sold. I Actually, I don't think I did. I'm trying to remember. Um, this is an interesting set. I like how what you get for $50 is just kind of weird. It doesn't go with a train. Tank truck, which I still have, and I like this one a lot for the price. This one, eh. This cargo train, though, I really do like. I think the main thing is just when LEGO has their own brand and the LEGO sets are kind of like that. I also like this unique build for the crane winch thing. In general, I like the design for the train. Also, I get two of these car builds, which are nice, because you really don't get those size cars in LEGO uh, City too much. And then just this little level crossing set, which is mostly just some extra train tracks. And then here are the fire sets, the fire helicopter, uh, repair truck, fire boat, 
and the off-road fire truck. I never had these, but they look interesting to say the least. This set's kind of overpriced though, 300 pieces for 50 bucks. I got the boat piece here is kind of big, but eh. But the main set I want to talk about is the fire station. I've actually gone over these before, but um, the main thing with the fire station is that I found this catalog in the box to that set. To this set, like I just randomly found it in there, I don't know how. Um, I must have just gotten mixed up or something, but that's how I first found the original version of the catalog that I have. Not this one, but I really do like the set as well. This is a great set. I think I might have talked about this in my last catalog review. But in general, I would not have found this catalog if it wasn't for this box, I guess. That's kind of how I found it. So here's the Kingdom sets, which I never really cared too much about these, but they're at least interesting in their look. I definitely prefer the 2007-2008 castle sets by these, mainly because I don't like the villains. But if the villains were interesting, I would have liked this much better. Because I do like the builds, I just don't care for like a lot of the the knights, I don't like it when Lego Castle does like a knight versus a knight thing. But you mainly have Outpost Attack, the Prison Tower Rescue, I kind of like this set for 50 bucks. I mean, the main dragon villain temple thing, Prison Carriage Rescue, and then the main King's Castle. But what I really found interesting were these two sets, which I like how it's like 4 bucks and you get like a minifigure and some accessories for them. And I like the wizard with the dragon piece, which those weren't too common. And the Jester, which I like for the, mainly the Jester hat piece, which I really like a lot. Then here's the gifts under $10. I like these as well. Um, small car, Night Showdown, all these types of Christmas sets. With the Lego Snowman set, literally just called the Lego Snowman set. Um, and the weirdest one is the Mana Warrior, literally a $4 set. With uh, a Mana Warrior and a rock. And then he has some of the Advent Calendars. Which they did, you know, of course they have one for City. Um, we also had this 2011 calendar. And what was weird is they had this one for Kingdoms, which looks interesting. Um, just, I guess, interesting, really. And again, I think the prices of the... These are actually more expensive than the newer ones, so... But I think these had... Uh, actually, no, because this one has like 167 Now, here we go. We have Atlantis, which is one of my favorite LEGO themes. This here is, I think I've talked about this one before, but all the other ones here are new for, uh, well, they came out in May, but they say new. Undersea Explorer, which at the time here, I didn't know that this could actually turn into like a vehicle, which is cool. I like the design here, along with the kind of eel looking thing there. Then here, Atlantis Exploration HQ, the final Atlantis set that I want. It looks interesting, at least, and I like how you can, you know, turn this base into like a submarine. And then here, of course, is my favorite Lego set, the Portal of Atlantis, which of course I have. And actually, I also want to talk about, I don't no idea why, but my most viewed video is the review to this set. Even though that video is like over a year old, and it's like what my, what my first video on this channel. I just find it weird, it has like over a thousand views now. It just recently passed a thousand views as well, too. And then you have the Deep Street Striker, which is this kind of big scorpion looking thing. Alright, so next are the Toy Story sets, which, I well, mean the Toy Story 3 sets, but these were kind of weird to me, but I kind of think they're interesting to say the least. This garbage truck set in particular, mainly because of the minifigures, and also it's, it's, I've never really seen a set where it's like above minifigure scale, except for like, you know, certain exclusive sets, but what I mean by that is like, they're bigger than the figures, and it's like, you know, minifigures that are in the actual set, and it really doesn't occur too much. Then we have the trash compactor, an interesting little play set. I like a lot of the features in it, but the piece count is kind of lacking. Western Chain Chase I've always kind of found interesting as well because of the pieces, especially those doors. But I do like how colorful it is and you get some interesting figures. And the Pizza Planet truck, which is my favorite because it just, you know, it's, uh, the iconicity of the truck there. And then this is kind of weird. They have uh, Duplo sets for cars way before the Cars 2 sets came out. And this is like a year before then. Which is kind of weird to me. And also you have the Toy Story Duplo sets. Here are just a you know a bunch of brick type sets. Mainly this one is interesting to me because I had this one. And I mainly recognize it for the seal and the polar bear there. And I actually made those. And it's just a interesting, you know, some weird stuff here for the bricks. Especially this one was like 50 bucks, and but you get like 700 pieces, which is pretty nice. 
And then here are LEGO Games. This is when the LEGO Games command came to America, because they were in Europe in 2009. But these were the first ones. You had Magna Monster, Wild Wool, which is like one of sheep for some reason as well. Orient Bazaar, I don't know. And then the main one was like this Harry Potter game here. Which looks interesting. I like all the pieces they use, and it's like a, it's supposed to be kind of a Hogwarts castle type feel. Uh, I guess you can kind of recognize some stuff from the movies there. Minotaurs, which I actually might get because I like the the style of the game. I like how the rules are. This is my favorite of the Lego games. I wish I got this one. This was around for quite a while. Ramsey's Pyramid. Uh, this one I had, but I, I used it to like not as the game, but I used it to build mocks and stuff like back. What, around 2011-ish, when I got this, I used it to like make mocks and stuff, which is weird, but yeah. We also have the Lava Dragon and the Pirate, co See that pirate Code. This page is interesting because it just has a bunch of random sets in here. Lunar Limo from Space Police, just take a year or two of it. Lava Trans, which I don't know if I'll get that one. I like the look of the set, but from what I heard, the crane works terribly. It, it cannot even grip a figure on there, which is kind of disappointing. But I do like the figures especially, and I might modify that crane so it can actually hold stuff, so we'll see how that works. This is the Lamborghini Policia. I don't know how to pronounce these. But I do like this one in particular because of how smooth it looks. And then you have this Brick Street Getaway one with some Dragon Knight Battle Pack here. And I guess there's also a Lego stocking. So, and this page is just, just advertising the Lego store along with uh, another thing for Lego Universe, which is a whole page for, and a little coupon, free shipping, $49 or more. It's kind of interesting there as well. Here's Lego Creator, one of my favorite years for this theme, even though I never got really got too many of the sets from it. This set I kind of want, Ferocious Creatures. Off-Road Power, which is one of the bigger sets from the theme. Sonic Boom, and my favorite, the Apple Tree House, which I'm actually going to talk about in a upcoming list video, which I have no idea when that will come out. I'm guessing in a couple of weeks. I'm working on the script right now. This is World Racer, so I was going to talk about this in a canceled video of mine. But I really do like this theme, but it kind of just, you know, it didn't sell too well. But a lot of interesting ideas here, especially with the Blizzard Peak, which is my favorite. I don't know if I'll get this set, but I do like a lot of the pieces with the boulders, and I just like the, the figures and the vehicles, especially that helicopter, which is kind of iconic to me. Desert of Destruction is a cool-looking uh, truck-type set. It reminds me a lot of the Agent's base set, the main truck, and then you have these two, which I think I have parts of that set because I knew someone who had it. So this theme is interesting, Prince of Persia. I really like this theme a lot, I'm just gonna say that, but I never really got any of the sets. These came out in spring of 2010, and I was gonna go over these, um, I was gonna do the spring 2010 one, but I canceled that one, because most of the sets are the sets featured are in other catalogs. But Quest Against Time, which I knew someone who had this one, and with this theme, I especially like the pieces. It's what I find underrated about this is that a lot of the pieces were awesome. So you had this knife piece here, this kind of uh, garb piece there. Um, the, a lot of Middle Eastern type pieces. I like these kind of comb smooth pieces there. And especially the camel. This and the ostriches are my favorite pieces introduced in the theme. You also get a lot of nice weapon pieces like these. Along with that claw piece which they've used since. Along with the sword which is from Ninjago as well. And they call it the butterfly sword. But in general, I like how they did a different approach with this theme and had a lot of sets based off of Middle Eastern, which I definitely amend, you know, Lego for, for doing that. And I just like a lot of the pieces that they introduced with this. And also, I like, just like the play features of these. They were interesting, and I kind of want this one because of how nice it looks, and the price back then was pretty good for the set of the size. But I also really like this ostrich one, which I actually have one of the ostriches, and I used to when you had this one as well. This uh, design my by me type stuff, which uh, and then is there advertising the Lego parks? And this is before the one of Florida came out. Hero Factory is one of my favorite Lego themes as well. Not too much, but I do like a lot of the 2012 sets. I never really had any of these, but I'll talk about one per two particular ones I really want. This page mostly has all the heroes, along with this motorcycle set and the dropship, which is the biggest set of the theme. At the time, I think actually I think this is just overall one of the biggest set from the theme. 
this interesting dropship with this uh, random hero character. But what I really like about Hero Factory is the villains. I love the villains so much. Von Nebula and Rotor I want to get one day. Especially Rotor. I like his design. Especially with the kind of blades on his back, which are a simple build. But I like them nonetheless. And Von Nebula, just like as a villain in general. Plus in the show, he's voiced by Mark Hamill, who's always a plus. Explode, Meltdown, Corroder, and Thunder, and then uh, Vapor, who was never in the show. But he looks interesting, but he uses a lot of the same pieces as Rotor, which is kind of weird. So here's Technic. I'll just go over this real quick because I don't really care. We've got Motorbike, uh, Snow Groomer, Container Truck. Snow Groomer is a weird name. And you have the big one, which is this mobile crane, which has not too many pieces I was thinking when I looked at it, but it's a pretty impressive build, I had to say. Especially for a 2 on 10, this is probably really impressive. And you have some of these motorized pieces. LEGO Universe, here's a whole page advertising this, which was a failed LEGO theme, which I think I've talked about in one of my other LEGO catalog reviews. But basically, it was less of, like, what, less than two years, I think. But it has an interesting idea, and I wish these pieces were actually made into LEGO. Because especially that purple blade there and the sword, and I think there's another character, this guy, who I really liked his headpiece there for the helmet. But in general, like, I didn't know what this was. It seems like... It's, yeah, it's an online game, but it's 40 bucks, so that was kind of weird. And then here we have Star Wars. This is the last theme featured in this catalog. I know this is one of my longer ones. The ARC-170 Starfighter, or the ARC-170. I think this, this one isn't new, but I just like the design of it once again. These are some of the magnets. The Clone Turbo Tank, which I really like this one and the 2016 one, but I think I like the 2016 one better. Which is a very unpopular opinion, but I think that's mainly because I like how more compact and much better of a build that one is. Plus, that one has better minifigures, but I do like Cad Bane, who, you know, just overall pretty interesting character. Um, these are just some battle packs I think came out earlier. Hoff Wampa Cave, which has, well, the Hoff Wampa. I really want the set. I have the Wampa, but I'm missing one of its horns, so I need to find that. And you also get a little Snow Speeder. Slave 1, which is looking kind of rough, but I think it looks interesting at least to say. Uh, and also in 2010. Then we have the at, AT Walker, which I wish they made a new one because I missed out on the 2014 one. But this one is actually almost the same. I think that one just has a lot more um, smooth pieces on it and much better kind of build to it. And then you have the MIDI scale Imperial Star Destroyer, which they made one of these for the Millennium Falcon as well, and they were kind of weird. It'd be much better though if they wanted have minifigures and plus they were like 40 bucks, which is kind of expensive. But then again, the piece count is pretty good. Now this page here is a lot more of the Clone Wars sets, and I'm actually going to do this set up top here last for this page. Cad Bane Speeder, which is kind of overpriced, but again, it's a cheap way to get Cad Bane, and he had some good pieces to him. This set, which looks very rough, like, this looks like a 2007 set. But I do like the figures, and yeah, this is like one of the only sets I ever want to burn up Anakin. You know, if a standard kind of Plo Koon fighter. But again, that's really rough. They could have at least put some tile pieces on there. And again, I hate it when they do builds like this, where this side will have studs and the other side will have anti-studs. But this set here, I actually just got less than a month ago. General Grievous is Starfighter. I've wanted this one for quite a while. I don't have, like, the, the full set. But I did get this at a flea market where I got some other stuff. Here it is right here. And actually what I did is I modified it. Because, again, it's an older set. So I'll probably modify it quite a bit. So that it's more structurally good. So I added these pieces onto it. And I actually added stud shooters. But it does still have the same features as the original one. Like this flick fire missiles here. And you can open this up and you can take out General Grievous. And I used the more, much better design of him, the white one of him. And I remade the fin because uh, the version I got at the sale was really, didn't even have it. But I had to dust this thing off quite a bit. It is It was very dusty and old. But I did fix it up quite good and it has some more pieces to it, which is pretty nice. This page just has sets of talk about before, except the Imperial Shuttle, which is a very impressive set. And I like a lot of the pieces they use there. And the figures are all right. And you also have a Death Star and a little uh, thing for the Tantive 4. And the back just has some more universe sets. But overall, this is probably my favorite LEGO catalog, just for the nostalgia. A lot of the sets I like, and this is 
this came out around the time I got into Lego too. So this is probably the first catalog that I ever had. But again, now I have more catalogs. So, and thank you for watching this video. And if you're wondering what age I am, I'm 16, which is kind of shocking to a lot of people, especially those who are following this account for my horror videos. But again, thank you for watching and bye guys.